Hello there guys, I am Ryan and I'm going to be talking about Formula 1. I'm going to be vlogging about Formula 1, the past, future and present Formula 1 seasons. Uh, I'm a McLaren fan and I've supported McLaren throughout the whole time I've loved F1, which is since, uh, well, I believe it was about 2000, 2001. I mean, McLaren was still racing in Formula 1 at the time and, you know, it was after he became world champion and I didn't know when I started liking McLaren and uh, McLaren, I, I didn't know he was, you know, it wasn't because he was world champion or anything, it was because they're a British team and I've always liked, uh, I've always liked British teams and they had David Coulthard as well, so British teams, British driver and, you know, so yes, I've always liked them. I've, in uh, the McLaren times, I've supported McLaren, I've gone through needless drivers supporting, you know, I've gone through Hacken and Coulthard, Montoya, Perez now, and still don't get that back. Sergio Perez is now at McLaren, but everybody knows he signed for McLaren for one reason, which was uh, the sponsorship deal. Because, as everyone's aware, at the end of 2012, Vodafone, Le Vodafone announced they were leaving their sponsorship deal with McLaren, so McLaren needed a new sponsor, and the perfect way was to get a driver into to get that sponsor and that was Sergio Perez of course because uh, I believe from 2014 onwards it's going to be the Telmex McLaren Formula 1 team so I might be wrong but I've heard it's Telmex who have taken over the sponsorship deal so a very very interesting deal that all see how how the money comes in from them as well but uh, start out with mid-season report from 2013 how has the season gone through the team's point of view as well Red Bull will be very happy with the way the season's gone well, no, really they haven't had as much victories as they would like you know they've had about uh, three or four is it uh, you know they won in uh, the first race win came Malaysia when that absolutely horrendous decision came out and I do still feel a bit do st still feel for Mark Webber after that, I think, because Malaysia was an absolute disaster for Mark Webber. It could be his one chance to actually win a race this season. So, you know, we all know what Vettel is like sometimes. We all know Sebastian Vettel is a talented driver. He always has been a talented driver. People can say, like me in the past, I've said, Sebastian Vettel, he's only winning because of the car he's in. Well... Te well, technically, yes, he is winning because the car he's in. But take into account what he's done in the past. You know, he got points on his debut for uh, BMW in Indianapolis 2007. Uh, he won the Grand Prix with Toro Rosso in 2008. So within the first two years of being a Formula One driver, you know, since Indianapolis 2007 to uh, Brazil 2008, he ended up with one victory and he hadn't even been in a top team he won't work with McLaren Ferrari you know he wasn't with any of them and he already won a race so yeah he is a talented driver people can say he's Marty he complains a lot but uh, he is a talented driver and you know but Malaysia I feel Malaysia he crossed the line a bit he was told by his team not to overtake Mark you know and he did it same can be said for Mercedes, which, in my opinion, Malaysia this year, uh, it was a publicity stunt from Mercedes. Rosberg could have had that podium, Rosberg should have had that podium, he was faster, he was quicker, but Mercedes turned around and said, no, don't overtake him. We all know why, because they're going to turn around and say, oh, look at us, we, are, we have signed Lewis Hamilton from McLaren and he's got a podium in his second race with the team. So... That's my uh, reaction to that. M McLaren, well, well, where to start with McLaren? It's just gone downhill since pre-season test, has it really? They had a dominant first pre-season test in uh, Ref, I think the first pre-season test was. They had a dominant one there, but after that one, it's been going downhill ever since. And I don't believe Jensen Button turned around and said... Uh, he thinks they are going to win a race this season. I doubt that. I doubt we're actually going to get a victory on the McLaren fan. I don't think we're going to win a race. 
you know it'll be the first time since 2006 we haven't failed we have failed to win a race and uh, no, that was the year Montoya walked out on the team obviously he obviously got a bit mardy you know and uh, but it's been going downhill uh, Ferrari another team whose season's going downhill I've been looking on the internet in the past about Luca de, Mont Luca de Montezemolo complaining about what's happened with uh, with Ferrari and you know why Alonso turned around and said what was the best birthday present someone else's car that made me laugh but yeah, you know but he's signed till 2016 the only way he can leave now is mutual consent by telling his team or you know uh, Lotus well I think they've got a really good chance to win the title if they can get their get the wins together. I think Raikkonen and Grosjean. It's a good pairing now, but I think Grosjean last year was a bit. Uh, it's it's that rookie, isn't it? It's not, it's his second. It's his first full season. Still lear, learning curve for him. But now I think he's maturing into the driver he's going to be. He's going to be a good driver in the future. He just needs the right attitude and the right pace. He he could have won his first race. In, uh, in Nürburgring and he could have won a race in Hungary but uh, two bad races they both went pear shaped uh, with Mercedes well they also have a good chance of winning the title and I think Lewis Hamilton could be the man to beat Vettel this season in my opinion I mean once this pre-season uh, once this pre-season one of them not mid-season break that's the one <laughs> once this mid-season breaks out the way then I think Mercedes could be a team to beat we are coming up to the Red Bull tracks though as we all know the Red Bull tracks which will be Singapore, Japan uh, Korea and India they are Red Bull tracks they've won there plenty of times uh, but I think they do have a very good chance, especially with Lewis Hamilton now starting to win races. He's won, he's won his first race. That's it. The, the, the hardest race is to win. One of them is going to be your first race win. It's a hard one to get, especially with your new team. Uh, Force India. It's going to be a very good battle, I think, between Force India and McLaren now. And Toro Rosso, those three teams, Force India, McLaren, and Toro Rosso, it's going to be a very battle to the very end of this World Championship, I think. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how the rest of the season pair pans out, especially with M3. You know, with, uh, with all this talk of Hulkenberg going to Lotus for next year to replace Kimi Raikkonen, and uh, maybe that could be a bit of a problem with uh, Sauber as well. If Sauber turn around and say, oh, this is really going to cause problems, and I think it will. Especially with Hulkenberg not doing a good job on Gutierrez, which I believe has got to be the worst rookie of the season. The second worst rookie being Catron uh, van der Gaard. But it's going to be a very interesting final uh, half of the season with Force India. McLaren and Toro Rosso fighting tooth and nail for their positions and Salva trying to get more points than they've got already which I think was getting rid of Kobayashi which could be one problem Kobayashi was a great driver he he, he always had he always went for a gap if it, even if it wasn't there he would always look for it he was a great overtaking driver was Kobayashi and another team who I've been very impressed with this season, and especially this season, is Marussia at the moment because they've done. It was, I think it was, a given that uh, Bianchi was a was given a race seat because Bianchi, I think with Ferrari, they would offer uh, a team some money to put. Oh, that was to put the uh, the Frenchman in to a race seat for the season because you know being uh, a Ferrari he was loaned out to 
uh, who was it? Force India last season to be their third driver, and he had to go somewhere else really to. He had to get in a race seat to, and Ferrari were looking for all options, and maybe this is a this is the right option, Mauricio really, because he was always going to get a race seat at the back up back up grid, and and really I think he he will be the man to replace Massa when Massa leaves. There's all been talk of other drivers coming in like. Maybe getting Kiri Rocket in in a McLaren, but I reckon he will be on his way to Red Bull. If not, maybe uh, uh, Ricardo. Yes, that's it, Ricardo. If it, that th that's the only two options I could see uh, going to Red Bull is either Ricardo or Raikkonen for next season. But looking ahead at Looking ahead to Belgium, I think it's another, it was another good trap for McLaren in the past. You know, we've had a few good traps for McLaren which have not really been our races. You know, it was I think it was Canada early in the season that that was one of our best tracks, and wow, that went pear shaped, didn't it? Because we didn't get a point, and that was the first time in like 60 odd races that we failed to score a point at, and it was a, a track that we won at every year since. 2008 when we didn't win there, 2010, 11, 12, we all, we'd won in Canada with Hamilton and Button, alternating years. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a half mid-season report. But you know, more introduction to me as well. Um, and if there is anything you want me to talk about, uh, history-wise or or in the future just leave a comment of course and if you like this video like and subscribe as well as I will be giving you more uh, videos about Formula 1 past, present and future so yes thank you for watching and uh, leave a comment if you want anything else anything in particular of course <laughs>